Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Welcome to Seattle. It is a beautiful night on a Friday night here at Safeco Field. The Blue Jays and Mariners will open up a three-game series. And this always brings a lot of excitement. You can see the new lights here at Safeco. They will strobe them from time to time. And the Blue Jay fans really show up in droves here in Seattle. When you think about it, Seattle not that far from Vancouver. And a lot of fans come down from British Columbia, Victoria, come off the island and come to Seattle for a weekend. And why not? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's only 227 kilometers from Vancouver to Seattle. We've seen fans all afternoon, and they have been anxious to get into this ballpark to watch the Mariners and the Blue Jays. And you're going to hear an atmosphere tonight that will remind you of Rogers Center. These fans come out. Yeah, and if you're not used to it, you swear that you are in Toronto for a home game for the Toronto Blue Jays. Inside here on a special night like tonight, you get King Felix Hernandez. All of those fans are down the left field line. They are sitting in King Felix's court. Anytime he pitches, they put on the yellow T-shirts and they'll hold up K's every time he racks up a strikeout. There they are down in the left field corner of this beautiful ballpark. Take a look at the lineup for the Blue Jays. Jose Reyes, top of the order, then Josh Donaldson. Interesting numbers for Donaldson. Remember, he played with the Oakland A's in this division. He has not fared well against the Mariners, a 154 average, but he's done some damage. He has eight home runs despite being struck out 45 times, and Jose Bautista. He absolutely loves the challenge of facing big time pitchers. You'll remember in 2010, he hit his 50th career, 50th home run of the season against Felix Hernandez at Raptors. And Center. he's got very good numbers against Hernandez. Uh, just 29 years old, Felix Hernandez making his 20th start of the season today versus the Jays is 323rd of his career. That's 10 straight seasons now with at least 20 starts for Felix Hernandez. Mentioned the 323 career start for the Mariners. That ties Jamie Moyer for the most games started in club history. But against the Blue Jays, he has had his problems. Especially pitching in this ballpark. He's made four career starts against the Blue Jays here at Safeco Field. He's got a 799 earned run average. Here's the first pitch of the game. Reyes takes a strike, and we are underway. Slightly overcast now, but it's 24 degrees. It's a beautiful evening for baseball. Reyes in the Oakland series went three for 12. He drove in a run. 15th career start for Hernandez versus the Blue Jays. You mentioned the problems that he has had in this ballpark versus Toronto. In three of the four starts, the Blue Jays have gotten to him for over six runs. That's airmail down the right field line. Reyes is headed for second. Cruz will get it back in. Reyes will stop at second as Hernandez called off the catcher and then airmailed the first baseman. And Reyes is aboard on the air by King Felix, his second of the season. Probably would have been better off just to let that ball go foul. Maybe maybe kick foul. Because where he catches this ball, you see it's right off at the top of home plate. He's right in the baseline. And there's no throwing lane for Hernandez to throw that ball. It goes over. Logan Morrison's head. And Reyes is going to end up at second base. It's an infield hit and an air on the pitcher. Josh Donaldson bats immediately with a runner in scoring position. Donaldson riding a three game hit streak. He hit it in all three games down in open. Five for 13. He takes downstairs. And Hernandez wants a new baseball. Well, a lot of Blue Jay fans, and they are already into their chant, let's go, Blue Jays. <laughs> Donaldson bounces it to third. That's a fair ball. Reyes is going to try to advance the return throw from Morris and not inside. Boy, that was a perfectly timed play by Reyes. He waited to make sure Seager was going to unload the throw to first, and then he moves up. And he knew that Seager couldn't take a look at him at second base. He's concentrating on that baseball. 
You see Jose is concentrating on Sevier. So he doesn't have time to look him back. So fires across the diamond. It's a long throw. And that's an easy 90 feet for the Blue Jays and Jose Reyes. That's another reason why managers and coaches will continue to harp on players running hard on every ground ball. You put a lot of pressure on a defense, and Seager didn't have time to check where Reyes was. So Bautista with 65 ribbies will step in the box. Chance for the Blue Jays to jump out early. The last time they faced Felix Hernandez in Toronto at Rogers Center, Hernandez gave up a first inning home run to Edwin Encarnacion. But then he really settled down. The Blue Jays wouldn't score again until the ninth of yeah. Fernando Rodney. That was it. In his seven innings, he just gave up that one run. And that 90 feet we're just talking about, how important is that? You know runs could be tough to come by tonight against Felix Hernandez. If you can manufacture a run. Look, at the Blue Jays haven't gotten the ball out of the infield yet. And they've got a runner at third base and their big RBI guy at the plate. They scored just four runs being swept last year in three games. So you're right. It's always a tough assignment for the Blue Jays to score runs here in Seattle. That four run total in the three game series ties their all time low in a three game series. The only other time that happened was in 78. Bautista waits back on that off speed pitch. The Blue Jays have an interesting theory about how they want to go after Felix Hernandez tonight. I'm going to use that change up, and it's a good one. He's got a good change up. But he throws it so hard it feels almost like a fastball. So they're going to instead of thinking about change up they're going to think about hard sinking fastball. How the veterans were talking to the younger players in the lineup tonight. Kevin Pillar and Devin Travis. Even Justin Smoke who doesn't have a lot of at bats against his former teammate. Hit it like it's a sinker and there come the K's out of Kings Court. Good job by Bautista. There is always one stray Blue Jay fan down in the King's Court. Actually, there's a couple of them right there. Probably came up, said, "Hey, can I get a ticket for the ball game?" Sure, got a great ticket for you. <laughs> Oops. How does he end up right in the middle every <laughs> single time? That's what I want to know. Full count, one out, and kind of shown. Will bat next. Bautista. Times up that breaking ball but pulls it foul. Yeah, he has seen the breaking ball. He has seen the fastball. He has seen the change up a little bit of everything from Hernandez. Another long at bat for Jose Bautista. Start that has been quite the norm lately, Ben. Brooke Jacoby was telling me that he's starting to think about the middle of the field just a little bit more. And I think that's why you're seeing these long at bats and you're starting to see a lot of production from Bautista. Instead of pull happy, really trying to yank the ball to left field, especially in these situations, he's thinking he's thinking a little bit more up the middle. Another ball fouled off. Look where they pitch Bautista. Everything is down and in. And Hernandez has the ability to run that pitch upstairs. Change your eye level. I was thinking the exact same thing right there. Does he take a shot? At that one fastball about letter high right at the top of the strike zone. Going down again and Bautista zeroed in. That's the reason I think it might be a good time to run the fastball upstairs because Jose is seeing everything. Down. Down. He's, he's hunched over. He's seeing the top of the baseball. Now you stand him up just a little bit. I got the feeling that. Hernandez was getting a little frustrated with this long at bat another foul ball. He's made some pretty good pitches against Jose and he has spoiled them. The appeal down to first and Bautista works the walk. What an at bat for Jose. Boy what an at bat is right. Well, the defense tonight has already committed an error, and Seattle's always takes a lot of pride in their defense. In the outfit, it's Cespedes, Austin Jackson, and Nelson Cruz from left to right. 
Kyle Seeger is at third base. Brad Miller's done a good job at short. Robinson Cano, two-time Gold Glover at second. Logan Morrison at first. And Mike Zanino, the youngster behind the plate. It's good defense that the Seattle Mariners throw out there. Tied for second American League in fielding percentage. And they're looking for a ground ball right here. They played good inner defense, especially over at first base. Logan Morrison leads Major League first baseman with a 999 fielding percentage, one error in 821 total chances. He has played 91 of a possible 97 games so far this season for Seattle at first base with just one error. And when Encarnacion ball in the dirt, nice job by Zanino. Zanino last year started 125 games behind the plate for Seattle. He's just 24 years old. And he's really developed into a frontline catcher. The big surprise is the way the bat has fallen off this year. Last year he was a 20 double, 20 homer guy. 2 and 0. Off the end of the bat. Morrison will look home, and Reyes is in between, and now he's going to break. Reyes slides safely and scores. Jose Reyes, twice this inning with his legs has taken advantage of the Mariner defense. A little nonchalant by Logan Morrison right there. He looked Reyes back and he froze him, but then when he went to go to first base and get the out, turned his back on Reyes and nonchalantly went over to tag the bag at first base, and Reyes took advantage of that once again. Boy, what a good job on the bases. Bautista ends up at second. You know who appreciates that effort? Edwin Encarnacion picks up an RBI. Oh, what a good job by Reyes twice in the inning using his wheels. Blue Jays score a run. They haven't got the ball out of the infield yet. <laughs> the only ball that's gone to the outfield is the throw by Hernandez. Ball right off the end of the bat by Encarnacion. And you can see Reyes. He is studying Morris all the way. And I'll tell you what, Josh Donaldson, I was watching him after this run was scored by Reyes as he gets the hand across. He was fired up like it's the World Series. He jumped out of the dugout onto the warning track when Reyes slid safely across home. That's did smoke the former Mariner. And Canacion picks up the RBI his 56. Pretty intent. Look on Donaldson's face. Pat, you really get the sense that this is truly becoming a team. You watch him work, you watch him practice, you watch him warm up. Everybody's pulling for one another. And now I think they can see the carrot. Smoke drives it to left. That ball sinks and Seth Smith's able to make a play on it. But how about the Blue Jays? They score a run in the first inning with an infield hit, a walk, and the air. Jose Reyes running the bases terrifically here early in Seattle, sliding home. First run of the game, one nothing Jays.
of the inning and gave the Blue Jays a run. And certainly these two teams always play tight contests and every out every play is very important. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Mariners. Kyle Seager has turned into a terrific player. The third baseman signed to a long term contract here with Seattle. This year against the Blue Jays he has four hits two of them home runs that came at Rogers Center of course. And then nobody hits the Blue Jays like Nelson Cruz. You look what he has done in just 68 games. He has 66 RBIs. And thanks to 18 home runs, this guy absolutely wears out the Blue Jays. Got to contain that bat. It's a good offense. And Marco Estrada will get the start tonight for the Blue Jays, making his 15th start of the season. He was masterful, I thought, his last time out five days ago against Tampa Bay. Eight shutout innings against Tampa Bay. Retiring 15 in a row at one point in the middle of that game. Did not give up uh, a walk. And used his change up in his fastball very effectively in that game. He's allowed two or runs or less in six straight starts. So he's on a nice little roll. He sure is and he's working to Deanna Navarro tonight. They have really clicked as a battery. Navarro will force his try to use his fastball. This is Austin Jackson in the center field. Brown ball right to Reyes. He bobbles it, bobbles it again, throws in time. Reyes has had some trouble in short recently, and that ball rattled around in his glove. Take a look at the defense for the Blue Jays in the outfield. Danny Valencia getting more playing time as he's swinging a hot bat. Kevin Pilar is in the center. Jose Bautista in right. Donaldson and Reyes on the left side. Travis and the former mayor Justin Smoke on the right side. And DeAndre Navarro starting behind the plate. His 16th start of the season. And over at first base, Justin Smoke. This is his first game back in Seattle. He spent five seasons here with the Mariners. He's had one error himself in 345 total chances this year. In his career, he's had over 5,000 total chances. He's at 24 errors. He's a good fielder, and you need good fielding when you're going up against Felix Hernandez. Can't make any mistakes, and he will save a lot of errors for Donaldson and Reyes thrown across the diamond. This is Kyle Seeger. I mentioned Seeger. His great start to the season against the Blue Jays. A couple of home runs at Rogerson. They wanted to give him a day off yesterday. They were facing David Price in Detroit on a getaway day, and he said, No way. He, he did not have a very good game on Wednesday. A couple of errors and Talked his way into the lineup, and all he did was hit a home run off of David Price in the first inning. The Mariners really were pleased with the effort they had in that series against the Tigers. Lord McClendon said it's the first time all season long that they really had good at bats. This team has not really produced offensively is the way the line, lineup suggested might. Yeah, it's, it, that's the biggest surprise, I think, with this team. That ball is drilled to center. Pilar got a good break on it. He's on the warning track and hauls it in at the 401 sign. That's what you want to do, I think, if you're Marco Estrada. Give up fly balls, but keep it in the middle of this diamond. Now let's take a look at the scanner report. He will use the fastball 49% of the time and note the mile per hour difference between the fastball and the changeup that he uses 30% of the time. That's 10 miles per hour difference. That's what you want. At least 10 miles per hour. That's really going to mess up the timing with those hitters. He's mixing in a few more curveballs, especially early in the count now. Get me over curveball. And he's cutting the ball a little bit more this season. Two down. Nelson Cruz. Estrada is starting in the place of Drew Hutchison, who has missed his start two days in a row now. Hutchison is penciled in to start tomorrow, but that's Certainly in pencil and not ink. Not sure how he's going to fare. Well, one way or another, Blue Jays are going to have at least one new arm that they can show off tomorrow. John Gibbons was telling us today that Aaron Sanchez is on his way here and will pitch out of the bullpen. It's always a challenge when you're in Seattle if you sustain an injury, getting players back from the East Coast. Gibbons reminding Navarro this guy will be swinging 3 and 0. 
Estrada doesn't look like he's really into his delivery just yet. Seems to be a little bit stiff and kind of mechanical, not really fluid just yet. Well, he's been a strike throwing machine, if you will, his last couple of starts. Uh, we all know about the two great starts back to back where he had no hitters late in the ball games, one against Tampa Bay and one against Baltimore. Then he was off for a little bit. I think those two starts really drained him a little bit. And he, Rejuvenated over the All Star break, and last time out, he was as good as he was in those two starts. Three hits over eight innings. He didn't allow a run and didn't walk a batter. This is Robinson Cano. Why is Cano hitting in the fourth spot? He's normally a number three hitter. Well, Lloyd McClendon wanted to mix things up just a little bit. You can see that average 263. That is not Robinson Cano. That's a guy, Cano, who has hit. Over 300 in eight of his 10 seasons in the big leagues. 263 is not going to cut it. So Lloyd McClendon just wanted to change things up just a little bit and give him a different look. And he's he's, falls behind two and oh. he's responded. He's had a great month of July. Robinson Cano and Miguel Cabrera both have six straight 300 seasons. It's the longest active streak in baseball. Victor Martinez has five 300 seasons in a row. Yeah, Estrada just really not into his delivery as yet. There's not that rhythm that we have seen from him in the past. Where he's firing strikes with all of his pitches. He did not walk a batter in that start against Tampa Bay last time out. Had five strikeouts. Blue Jays have a one nothing lead. Another 3 0 pitch. There's a strike right at the top of the zone. Estrada's highest walk total this season is four. He's done that on three different occasions. He retired the first two batters this inning on seven pitches. And then walked Nelson Cruz on four straight balls. Cano pops it up into the outfield. Bautista, the right fielder, coming in. Pilar calls for it. The center fielder makes the catch. And Estrada pitches around the two hour walk. No harm, no foul. One nothing Blue Jays. ERA leaders in the American League from 2009. It's an impressive list. Let's start at number three with David Price at 322. Jared Reaver at 312. And then Felix Hernandez, number one, by a wide margin, a 273 herb run average in the American League. The hitters league with all these great hitters ballparks. That's total domination right there. For his career, Felix Hernandez is 
one thirty six and ninety seven with a career ERA at three point zero six. But against the Blue Jays a different story. This is 15th career start against the Jays. He's got a 453 earned run average. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Highest career ERA versus any single opponent that he has faced multiple times, and it's been the Blue Jays. Janner Navarro had just one at bat in the Oakland series. Russell Martin caught all three games. Navarro came in after Martin was lifted for a pinch runner in the middle game of that three game series. There's the first strikeout for King Fields. It's a breaking ball and it gets Navarro. Well, we'll see now if he starts to rack up those K's, those strikeouts by pounding that strike. So 22 pitches in the first inning, 10 balls and 12 strikes. Everything was down and bouncing on the plate. Let's see if he makes the adjustment. It looks like he did against Navarro as he strikes him out with that breaking ball. That was a good curveball. Looked like it sped up at the end and broke straight down. One out, Danny Valencia. Valencia had three hits in his two games in Oakland, including a home run. Had a deep home run off of Sonny Gray to center field. He got that batting average up over 300 again. Just dipped under 300 for a couple of days. He gets jammed and flares it into the Mariners dugout. Danny's done a real nice time of staying sharp. His at bats have been somewhat inconsistent coming into this game. He's 144 at bats, so there's strike three. Hernandez not wasting any time. Oh, until he went for the kill and gets that fastball on the outside corner. Well, he had such a long first inning. Why wait around? Why try and set up a guy? Just go right after him with two strikes. And there's a comeback. Fastball right on the corner for a second strikeout. Kevin Pilar. Goes after the first pitch, bounces it to the third baseman. And well, that's how you make an adjustment if you're a Cy Young Award winner like Felix Hernandez. Seven pitches dispatches the Blue Jays in order. Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Beautiful night in Seattle. We are at Safeco Field. 24 degrees at the start of this ball game, and you can see there are an awful lot of Blue Jay fans in attendance. 
Seth Smith, the left fielder, will step in against Marco Estrada. Estrada had a two out walk in the first inning, but stranded that base runner. Everything up and away. He's got to get back on track just a little bit more and get that momentum going towards home plate. It's like Marco's falling off the first base side just a little bit more than what we are used to seeing from him. There's a good fastball downstairs. How much might Estrada be affected by the fact that he was supposed to pitch tomorrow and they bumped him up again? You know, they were hoping that he would pitch tomorrow, give him that extra day. He's pitching on normal rest, pitched five days ago, but Gibby was saying before the game they were hoping that he'd get that extra day. And it could have a little something, a negative effect on him. You start to do all your work in between starts and you start to plan both physically and mentally to get that start on Saturday, then you're informed that you're going to throw on Friday instead. So it could have a, a negative effect on him. But if you know Marco. Yeah, he's not going to suggest that that is the case. And here he comes up with his first strikeout. He gets Seth Smith to start the second. Yeah, he's just going to go out there and pitch. He's not going to look for any kind of excuse. That time he just took care of Smith with the good old fastball. This is a pitch that has been incorporated in his starts just a little bit more since Navarro. Deanna Navarro has started catching him more. The usage of that high fastball. And high breaking ball taken by Mark Trumbo. Trumbo was picked up in a deal with the Arizona Diamondbacks that took place on the 3rd of June. They're hoping that he replicates his second half last year. And he had 42 RBIs in the second half of the season. Trumbo was an all star with the Angels in 2012. It was an 18th round pick. Yeah, we haven't seen him for a couple of years, but when he first came up with the Los Angeles Angels, you and I thought that this guy's going to be the next big slugger in the American League. Nicky Hatcher was the hitting coach at the time, and he was praising Trumbull. He said, I've never seen any hitter put backspin on a baseball like Trumbull. He had a nice level swing, and that ball jumped and carried and some long home runs early in his career. Yeah. With the Angels fly balls, they just seem to carry them out. Trumbo with a choo choo count. For the season, well, since he's come to Mariners, he's hitting 220. Hasn't provided the power they were hoping just yet. Change up outside. You know, when he finds that change up, Marco has that ability to throw it at any time in the count. He can throw it 3 2 if he has to. But right now, he just hasn't found it. He bounces it. You can see Estrada is battling his control right now. He's walked two. And in his last start against Tampa on Sunday, he had no walks and eight innings. It's just a touch and feel type of pitch, a lot like the knuckleball, where you, you got to get a feel for it. You got to get out on that mound. You got to get into game situations like this and get that feel of that ball to let it go and throw it where you want to. And you can see that last start by Estrada, eight innings, no walks, has already had here two tonight. Logan Morrison, the first baseman. Batting with trouble at first. There's the good change. Huh? Morrison for the season. 12 homers and 33 RBIs. He had a good game. In that opener of the series at Rogers Center, he had a two run triple against Estrada. Late on that fastball. That two run, two out triple came in the fourth inning. And then Morrison was knocked in by the catcher, Mike Zanino. And it made it a much better 
situation for Hernandez who gave up a first inning home run to Encarnacion in that game but won the game for the team. This is where Navarro can be most helpful to Estrada. He has the best perspective of that delivery. And he can figure out something to get Estrada down a little bit into that good part of the strike zone. That last pitch was a purpose pitch right there, a high fastball. A lot of times you can throw a breaking ball off of that. Change up up the middle that sneaks through into center. Morrison go ahead. Excuse me, Trumbo heads to third as Morrison gets a single. That's the first hit off of his strong. You know, even though he was fooled, he was able to keep his weight back and keep his hands back just enough to get good wood on that ball. Change up down and away. You can see Logan Morrison stays with that one. He doesn't commit too soon. You can see he's trying to stay back and it's trying to get that weight to the front part, but it stays back long enough as he shoots the ball back through the middle. Trumbo's at third, Norrison's at first. The double play is in order. Uh, number the shortstop. And be careful with this guy on the first pitch. He is swinging as soon as he gets into that batter's box. That's on the first pitch and fouls it over the screen. Miller hit 10 home runs for the Mariners last year. That was the second most home runs in the American League by a shortstop. Alexei Ramirez had 15. Reyes, Escubo Cabrera, J.J. Hardy all had nine. Hardy had an off year because of injuries. He's not going to walk. He is up there swinging. Morrison dives back in. He has five steals. He picks his spots very effectively. He's only been caught once. Well, you're right. You picked up on the fact that Estrada is really falling off toward the first base foul line. A little bit more than we have seen in the past. Yeah, a little bit more than, you know, he falls off, but not that much. Not like we have seen so far. What that does is it slows your arm down just a little bit. And you can't release the ball out in front. Foul back. This is the fifth pro season for Brad Miller. It was a second round pick in 2011 of Big strikeout for Estrada's second of the inning. And now he can strand a pair. Facing the number nine hitter, Mike Zanino. First and third, less than two out. You need a pop up or a strikeout or a ground ball. Estrada goes with the heater. Fastball, he throws it right by Miller. That swing right there suggests he might be, he might have been looking for a changeup. Logan Morrison got a two strike changeup and singled to center just ahead of Miller. Now Mike Zanino, the catcher. Zanino's 24 years old. Last year he had 20 doubles and 22 home runs. Been a tough season for him, batting 169. And he still has power, the nine home runs, but 169 average. Not going to get it. Stop the play and he chased. Ball on the strike. Blue Jays have a one nothing lead. They scored their run because of the legs of Jose Reyes. He made two great decisions on the bases and came in to score on a ground out to the first baseman. Two balls and his strike. Go 
Well, whenever he's in a jam, he goes back to that changeup, and sooner or later it comes around for him. Yeah, that's why I say just keep throwing it until you find it and get comfortable with it because it is such a big part of what you do. Keep throwing it. Blue Jay fans have stolen some K's from the King's Court. That must be a nice crowd down there in King's Court. Sharing their case. <laughs> Leadoff man is on deck. Austin Jackson. Pre and two two outs the runner at first. Logan Morrison will be off on the pitch. Trumbo is at third. There goes Morrison. Ball is driven to left. Danny Valencia is there and Estrada. Gets out of a tough jam. First to third two outs. He is stranded three so far for the Blue Jays. Number nine into the rookie Devin Travis. He's swinging a hot bat. Back to the top of the order. Reyes has scored already. Donaldson's having a great road trip. He'll bat third. is nothing but support for the Mariners and Felix Hernandez. In fact, I'm in Kings Court. About 1,500 fans all decked out in free yellow jerseys. They have the yellow K cards. And every Felix Hernandez start, one lucky fan wins a turkey leg. This gentleman here is the lucky fan. Sir, do you mind if I have a buddy or turkey leg? Uh, where are you from? I'm from Toronto, sir. No way. <laughs> you heard it, but no turkey for the folks from Toronto. I and mean, he was Back nice. He threw in an A for you. <laughs> that was awesome. Good job, Barry. That is quite a great group down there. And they show up for every Felix Hernandez stunt. I think it's very clever. And I think it's really, really cool. Every time he makes a start here at home, they fill up that left field corner. And it just gets bigger and better every year. Something added to it. Devin Travis. Takes a strike. I don't recall the turkey leg until recently. That's cool. Blue Jay fan with the maple leaf flag saying hi, Mom. Back home, and there's the K's. Inside. Not just yet. Evan Travis has gotten the attention of a lot of his teammates for the quality of his swing. Russell Martin was praising Travis because they have. Started hitting in the same group now. Marvin Martin moved to Travis's group. Boy, and Navarro said the same thing. He said, Boy, this kid's got a great swing. Just a great approach. Talking to some of the Blue Jay coaches today about that. Uh, so all you have to do is just watch him. Watch his approach at the plate. He stays back, back behind the ball. He's thinking about right center field. Miller at short, gobbles it up in time. One down. Travis three time. Well, Barry Davis mentioned that the one fan down in the King's Court is awarded turkey leg, and here comes the chef. 
And he's got a pot and he picks the winner. Presented with the turkey leg. Oh, he's got two. That's pretty cool. And they get right into the spirit of things very quickly. The Mariner Moose is down there to participate in the presentation. Ah, that's good spirit. I like that. Reyes. He has his second hit of the night. He's the igniter in this lineup, that's for sure. Well, he showed it in that first inning with his legs. He got a, a board on an infield hit, went to second on an error. And then a couple of nice base running moves got the Blue Jays that run. This time it's off the end of the bat, and there's Jose over at first base. Reyes has done a good job stealing bases. He's 15 for 17. Hernandez, a very good athlete on the mound. He will make it difficult on Reyes to get a good jump. Donaldson pulls it down the left field line. That's a foul ball. Got out in front and just missed extra bases. Donaldson grounded out to Seeger in the first inning. And Reyes advanced from second to third on that ground out. That set up the Blue Jays run. Mentioned Donaldson hitting against the Mariners. A 154 average for his career. See Hernandez just held the ball. He had no intention whatsoever. Of throwing that pitch, he was waiting to see maybe Reyes yeah. takes off early. No intention of doing every anything, just hold it, see if Jose would flinch. Donaldson tries to bunt. Seeger was back at third, but he bunts it foul. Not a bad two. idea, right there. Not a bad idea. You see that third baseman back that far, you're facing a tough pitcher, and Felix Hernandez, he drop one down. Seeger's a Gold Glove third baseman. Oh and two. Strike three and Donaldson had a different pitch on his mind. He takes that fastball for strike three. Hernandez went after Valencia 0 2 at the fastball challenged him didn't want to mess around and you're right that fastball right there. Josh was looking for something off speed. So they will take that information back to the bench and they'll talk about it. No team makes adjustments more than the Blue Jay hitters. There goes Reyes. He got a good jump in. Zamino never got a good grip on the baseball. So Reyes has his 16th stolen base. Zanino has now thrown out 10 of 28. As he looks at that base, but he just couldn't get a good grip. And Reyes got a good jump. I don't know they would have had a shot at no, him. No way. He got a good jump, went on first movement. And now he's in scoring position for Bautista. Jose had a terrific at bat in the first inning as he. Fouled off several tough pitches and finally worked Hernandez for a walk. Bouncing ball to third. Seeger over to first. The inning is over. Reyes is stranded aboard. He has two hits tonight against Felix Hernandez. The Blue Jays have a one nothing lead.
and Game Live are on in demand in true HD. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and much more. It also includes a free At-Bat 15 subscription. Watch baseball at home, at the office, or on the go. Season-long subscription packages are available. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. And on that premium, you can see that the Boston Red Sox finally win. They snapped that eight-game losing streak, but it took extra innings to do it. Yeah, it's been a real rough road trip. One of their worst road trips in their franchise history. They went 0-7 on that most recent road trip. And how about Scott Casimir? Casimir was traded before the game yesterday down in Oakland. He went to Houston, and he had seven shutout innings tonight against the Kansas City Royals in Kansas City. That's uh, why you make those trades right there. You kickstart your team. Casimir, seven innings, three hits, no runs, a walk, and three strikeouts. Makes yourself pretty popular with your new team. Yeah, and, and it comes at the right time. Hey, you, you've got a big series coming up with the Kansas City Royals. Hey, let's get some reinforcements here. So the timing of that trade is perfect for Houston. Austin Jackson grounded out the shortstop his first time up, chases that high pitch. His catcher's bit in frustration. He had it in the webbing for a moment, but it popped loose. Jackson has life. That would have been another strikeout. High fastball tipped. It's in and it's out. Two two pitch outside. Navarro has high praise for Estrada as you look at Kyle Seeger on that. In that Estrada has the ability to really locate his fastball, but just right now it's not working for him. There's a good fastball upstairs. He hit his spot that time. That's three strikeouts for Estrada. You know, maybe it starts with the fastball. You start pumping fastballs in there just a little bit more so you get the feel for that and you get the Seattle Mariners swinging. And then the changeup comes. So far, he's thrown 47 pitches, 23 balls, 24 strikes. So it's been 50 50 for him right now. He just hasn't found that comfort zone yet. Kyle Seeger flied out to shallow center field his first time. There's the good changeup. Now things are starting to get back in sync for Estrada. Ball drops in there, 0 and 2. There's Blue Jay fans. I can tell. Their version of the court. Yeah. Right? But there are a lot of Blue Jay fans here, and they have a great time. They come down. Of course, it's a weekend series, so you can make the entire weekend. Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday afternoons. Seager drives it to left. Valencia comes in and makes a chest high catch. Two down. Well, two outs. That's the way they faced Cruz in the first inning, and he walked on four pitches, and he's always a threat. And this is why you want to face him with nobody on and two outs. Home run leaders. The last two seasons, Nelson Cruz with 64. He's tied with Mike Trout with the most home runs. There's Pujols who's having a great year, and of course, the usual suspects: Bautista and Encarnacion at 55 and 53. But Nelson Cruz has—he I mean, has really lit up the Blue Jays in his career. Last year was the only year where he was in the same division as Toronto. He goes after the first pitch and rips a single to left field. 
Yeah, he's always been out of the division, and it's impressive the way he's been able to rack up the RBIs. That's an interesting approach Cruz has. Big power hitter with no stride. He didn't pick up that front foot at all. He's used his hands and drills it to left field. So Cruz has been on base twice tonight. Now Robinson Cano he popped out to the center fielder to end the first. That's a pop up over near the Blue Jays dugout. Navarro will get to the railing and it's down on the bottom step out of his reach. Of course, with Cano, as hot as he's been lately, any opportunity you have to retire him, you want to make the most of it. Yeah, players know that. They'll lay out. You see Navarro, the honors thinking about maybe jumping in, but it's just out of his reach. Cano, the month of July has always been good to him. This month he's hitting 354. It's his highest batting average in his career of any month. He's 28 for 79 coming into this ball game. That's the eighth highest average in the American League in the month of July. Fouls that pitch back. Cano was such a great player with the Yankees, and then last year he signed a lucrative contract with the Seattle Mariners. In my mind, I think Cano is kind of a role player. I mean, a very good one and an all star and a gold glover. But he's not an impact guy. He's not a guy like Cruz that can win a game for you single handedly. He's kind of a complimentary player. And I think in this lineup, he's become a focal point for opposing pitchers. And it's been a real challenge for him. I think that's why they went out and got Cruz to give him a little bit of protection early in the year. It was Cano hitting three. And Cruz hitting four, giving him a little bit of protection, but Cano was rolling over a lot of pitches trying to pull the ball. That was a good pitch that Estrada got inside on Cano. Edgar Martinez is new hitting coach for the Seattle Mariner, and he's trying to instill in Cano that hey, when they pitch you away, stay on that ball and hit the ball with authority the other way. Shoot the ball to left field. He's starting to do that, and I think that's why his July has been so good. There's Edgar. What a terrific player Edgar was. Big part of this Seattle Mariner history. And now fouls it straight back. He was named the hitting coach on the 20th of June, and he's prominent in this city, not just in this ballpark. He's made his home here for a number of seasons. He knows a few things about hitting, doesn't he? He played 18 major league seasons with the Mariners. He was inducted into the Mariners Hall of Fame in 2007. One and two again. And Cano gets a piece of it to stay alive. One and two, two outs. The Blue Jays have a one nothing lead. We're in the bottom of the third inning in Seattle. Blue Jays took two of three against Oakland before coming up here to Washington. This has popped up. Ray is the shortstop just on the edge of the grass. Cano gets jammed and the Mariners strand another base runner. Estrada has stranded four through three innings.
Thank you very much, Hazel. As the Tigers waste a pretty good start from Justin Verlander, and we haven't said that very often this year. Verlander goes eight innings, allows just one run on seven hits, didn't walk a better. He's matched up against Rick Porcello. He, too, has been struggling. He had a good start tonight. Porcello goes seven innings, allows a run on five hits. He didn't walk a batter. That game ended like the Blue Jays game ended the other day with a review on the play at the plate. It had to take some time before the Boston Red Sox could celebrate. We mentioned the Red Sox had lost all seven games on their last road trip. In Anaheim and Houston and Jose Altuve walked them off in final game. Just to put an exclamation point on a terrible road trip for Boston. Felix Hernandez has allowed a run on two hits his air contributing to the Blue Jays run in the first. Get into a group of Blue Jay fans down the left field line. That fan can't believe it. He had it right in his left hand and let it go. Bring your glove. That's why you bring <laughs> your glove for plays just like that. Little tapper out in front of home plate. It'll be flipped to first in front of soon. Is read time. Well, when you come to the ballpark and you sit down the left field line, if you bring a glove, you make a catch or you get your fingers bent backwards like that fan did right there. That's what he was talking about. Ouch. Yeah, that's you. We got you. You were the one that hit that baseball but couldn't make a catch on it. That's and right in the webbing if he has his glove on. Absolutely. That's an easy play. Justin Smoke. Goes after the first pitch and hits the fly ball to center field. Jackson makes the catch and Felix Hernandez has retired four straight. Well, what makes him so tough? This fastball, you can see it's just 91, 92, touching 93. He doesn't throw as hard as he used to, but he combines that with a changeup that's 88 miles an hour. It looks like a fastball. It's got tremendous movement, on late movement. He'll mix in the curveball every now and then, and a slider just 5% of the time. But it's a great combination, that fastball changeup. And that's why Deanna Navarro and some of the other veterans said you got to treat Felix Hernandez like he's throwing your hard sinkers because that changeup is so hard. This is Deanna Navarro. He struck out swinging in the second. You know, we have information about everything. You know, how a guy feels when it's 85 degrees or hotter, which day of the week he has the most success. I mean, we got everything. And there's a stat that we were given today about the differential between Hernandez's fastball and his changeup. It's the second lowest differential in velocity in the major leagues, second to that Grinky of the Dodgers. Both two terrific pitchers that they don't have that separation you normally see between a fastball and a changeup. Not like Marco Estrada where there's 10 miles per hour difference. Sometimes I've seen 12, 13 miles per hour difference. That's why his changeup is so unique because it looks like a fastball and does that. There it is right there, 89 miles an hour, and you saw the late break that got underneath the bat of Navarro. Navarro goes after that changeup. Hernandez's average fastball is 91.5. Average changeup, 87.9. Navarro lifts this one to right. Cruz backs up a few steps, just shy of the warning track. Felix Hernandez, the Blue Jays got a run on him in the first, and now he has really set them down.
Petco tonight, we have also a number of Rogers contest winners. And if you're a Rogers Share Everything customer traveling to the U.S. like these fans are, you can share your experience and stay connected with Rome Like Home. $5 a day, that's all it costs. You go to visit rogers.com slash Rome Like Home. What a great destination for a road trip if you're a Blue Jay fan. I'm just going to run now, quickly into the tunnel here. That's quite a picture right there, isn't it? Young man in the King's Court. A lot of Blue Jay fans here. They got the Blue Jay flag, the Maple Leaf flag, and a couple of big heads, Bautista and Russell Martin. I tell you, they have a great time. We see them all over town whenever we come to Seattle, and I'm always anxious to say hi, get a picture, sign an autograph. Good to have them here. They're starting to bring us gifts, Buck. <laughs> what, what did we do to deserve that? Yeah, that lady brought us a couple of sweatshirts from Fort Nelson, B.C. We want to thank her for that. That's off the end of the map. That's going to be a base hit. Seth Smith with a swinging bunt up the third baseline. Let's check in with Hazel May. She's got an update. Seth Smith at first base with a swinging bunt up the third baseline. Marco Estrada's handle lefties this year to the two to two fifteen. But sometimes with that great changeup, you'll get these types of swings and these types of results cued right off the end of the bat for an infield hit. Three hits now for Seattle. Mark Trumbull walked his first time up. Devin Travis at second base trying to get the umpire's attention. Chad Fairchild. He said, hey, man, you're standing right in my way. I can't see the banner. Fairchild moved to his right a step or two. Fly ball to right. Bautista on the track at the wall. This ball is up and gone. Bautista timed his leap perfectly, but Trumbo goes deep to right field. Estrada's done a terrific job of keeping the ball in the ballpark recently, but Trumbo goes opposite field and hits a two-run home run, a swinging bunt, and a two-run homer. Mariners are up. That's why they went out to get Mark Trumbo right there to add some right-handed pop. In this lineup, they've got Cano and Seeger from the left side, Cruz from the right side. They need a one more big stick, and here it is, Mark Trumbull. Last time up, we were talking about the power and the way he generates a lot of backspin. That time he did it on a pitch away from him. Bautista leaps for the ball. The fan. In right field leans over and he's got his glove and he makes sure he keeps that home run souvenir. He's got his Mariner jersey on and now he has a Mark Trumbo home run ball. And that breaks a streak. You mentioned that Marco hadn't been giving up the home runs lately. Streak three straight starts without allowing a home run is broken right there by Trumbo. Logan Morrison single to center. This time he shatters his back. Smoke will step on the bag. The barrel of that bat, the sharp end of that bat, went about seven rows deep over the Mariners' dugout. Everybody appears to be okay. Look at the fan that catches it and his friend next to him. He's as excited as the guy that caught the ball. We got a ball, pal. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and a Mariner home run to boot. Uh, that's a great shot. Time to take a picture. Throw it out there. Brad Miller batting with one out. There's a buzz in this ballpark right now after Trumbo went deep. We were talking earlier about Mark Trumbo, how his fly balls, they just seem to go and carry. 
and carry and then just carry out of the ballpark when that left the bat that looked like a fly ball to right field. And Bautista played it like it was going to be catchable but just kept carrying it kind of over the wall and right. For Trumbo it's his 12th home run of the season. And has put the Mariners out on top two to one. We mentioned his great second half last year. He, had, he drove in 42 RBIs after the All Star break last year over the Diamondbacks. Miller will take ball four. That's three walks issued by Estrada. Marco's done a great job of. Limiting the number of hits coming into this game, the opponents are batting 216 against him. And he's just really carved up the hitters he's faced. The home run ball once again rears its ugly head tonight. Unlike tonight, for the most part, every one of his starts, he has taken the mound and he's had control of three pitches. And he's been masterful moving in the changeup and then using the curveball and the fastball. Tonight, he just hasn't been able to. Get on track. He's up over 70 pitches already. The three walks contributing to that total. Mike Zanino, the catcher, lined out to end the second. Fouls this one off the screen behind home plate. Zanino is from Florida. He was drafted third overall in 2012 at the University of Florida. This is his fourth pro season. They want the appeal. Jim Joyce down at first at no swing. Flashed the safe sign very quickly. Miller at first, she drew the third walk issued off the strop. Wonder if they would start the runner at some point. Stay out of the double play. He's got 10 stolen bases, Miller. Zanino has a lot of strikeouts. That might be the only reason they wouldn't start the runner. Not running. He'll run now. Three, two, two outs. Two, three and two, one out. Jackson, the leadoff man behind him. But you guess that he's going to throw a changeup, so that takes a little bit longer to get to the plate. It's a perfect pitch to run on, I think. A changeup. Stay out of the double play. Not running. And again. Zanino has 106 strikeouts this season, so there's a lot of swings and misses. So, like McClendon not wanting into, not wanting to run into a strike amount throw amount. Zanino drives this one to center, long run for Pilar. He's not going to get there. It bounces out of play, and for the time being, that saves the Blue Jays a run. Miller was already around third, headed for home, and now he'll have to go back to third. Zanino drives the ball to the deepest part of this ballpark, and it bounces out of play. That's his tenth double of the season. Blue Jays catch a break right here. We told you he's got some strength when he makes contact. That time Tonito stayed down and threw that baseball and drove it a long way to right field off the warning track and out of play. Extra base as you can see Miller runs well and he reads that that ball is not going to be caught by the Blue Jays. Here he comes. He's thinking about scoring but it's out of play. And he's got to trot back to third base. Nineteenth extra base hit for the Mariners catcher Mike Zanino. Miller at third. It's Donnelly, the longtime coach at third base. Pete Walker out to the mound, and as he returns, Ryan Tapera starts to loosen up. Remember, Aaron Sanchez is 
on his way to Seattle. He's been told to get on a plane. He will be activated tomorrow and will work out of the bullpen. Austin Jackson. Runners at second and third. The Mariners have taken a 2 1 lead on the two run home run off the bat of Mark Trumbo. Third time through already. Now the Mariners against Marco Estrada. Just in the fourth inning. Jackson reached for that pitch off the plate and fouls it back. Jackson has grounded the short and struck out. That good change of it really floated in there in a great spot. Jackson's going to have to change the swing right now. It's a little bit too long. I guess that change up. That's exactly what the Blue Jays are hoping for right there because they need a strikeout. Jackson lays off that change up in the dirt. Two and two now. <laughs> I like it. Foul back. See, that's a true fan right there. Who's going to go into en enemy territory right there? Sit right in the middle there and then flaunt it by picking up one of their K's and wearing a Blue Jays jersey. Well, and they're pretty classy fans in the King's Court. Hey, can I borrow your K? We need to strike that. <laughs> they're having fun. Marco Estrada. This will be his 83rd pitch. And it's a good one. That Blue Jay fan got his wish. Take that. <laughs> Four strikeouts now for Estrada. Sit he down. got. Sit down, eh? <laughs> I love that. That's great. Like point two. That is great. <laughs> You can have my K, but I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> They're having a good time. That's what baseball is all about. Jackson strikes out for a second time. Now there are two outs in the dangerous Kyle Seeger. He's 0 for 2. Got to save these runs right here. They caught a break with that ball bounced out of play. Now you got to get a good hitter out. Seager this season reflects the problems the Mariners have had. He's hit 213 with runners in scoring position. This should be a much better offensive club than it has been to this point. Pickoff play is on and Donaldson tags up. Brad Miller for Donaldson and Navarro. It's the second time they've done this in an Estrada game. Donaldson was way off the line. Two outs. Miller fell asleep. And then Donaldson just blocked third base. He couldn't get back. Big out for Navarro and Donaldson. And there's Donaldson. He catches it and then just lays down in front of the bag. And Brad Miller steps all over Donaldson, but he'll take it to end the inning. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Hazel May and Greg Zahn.
It's our next Fan Friday Festival presented by Bacardi. Get to the ballpark early for the Blue Jays Royals game at 7.07 for our pregame festival outside gate 10. Gates will open at 4.30 and you can enjoy live performance by special guest Chad Brownlee in the license area. Go to BlueJays.com for more details. And guys, we've got ourselves a pretty good Blue Jays Friday Fan Fest going on here at Safeco Field. Well, we sure do, Barry, and the Blue Jay fans saw the defense get them out of a tough situation. Yana Navarro and Josh Donaldson teaming up to end the threat in the fort. You know, Josh said, I'm going to take the brunt of this, but I'm going to block that guy off the bag. Totally legal at third base. Totally legal. He got stepped on, but he got his team back in that dugout, got him out of a sticky situation. Set play, left hander at the plate. You can see he's hustling to third base and then blocks the bag right in front of it. Watch where the foot of Miller spikes him right on the thigh. But he ends up getting the out. And that is with the big curveball. I don't understand where the runner thought he was going to go there. Two outs. He can stroll home. And this has been a problem for the Mariners all season long. Mistakes, base running mistakes. It takes you out of a two run situation with a tough hitter at the plate, Kyle Seeger. An RBI type of guy. You see, Donaldson breaks on the pitch. That's a set play. And there was no way that Miller was going to get back to that bag. Donaldson can help you win games in so many different ways. Danny Valencia one and two lays off that changeup. What did the coaches say about Josh Donaldson? He's a risk taker, but a playmaker. And we have seen it all season long. He'll take the risk of blocking a guy off like that. He'll take that risk, but he's a playmaker. And he made another play right there. Valencia stays alive and gets a piece of it. Look at all the pitches down. That was the one thing we talked about. Donaldson and his hitting mates talk about making Hernandez get the ball up. Bring him up into that strike zone. They're out man. <laughs> There's a, another fastball strike. Blue Jays have off speed pitch in their mind and Valencia is caught looking. Second time he has taken strike three. Both of them fastballs. Maybe looking for something off speed. And Hernandez thought he might have cut that ball just a little bit. Well, he can make that baseball do a lot of things. He has the ability to move it in and out, cut it, sink it, and works to both sides of the plate. It's just so durable. We mentioned this is his 323rd career start for the Mariners. And that ties Jamie Moyer for the most games started in club history. If you're wondering where Randy Johnson is on that list, he's third. As Pilar goes around 266 games for Randy Johnson. Now, yeah, and Hernandez is 29 years old. He's still in the prime of his career. He won that Cy Young a few years ago with a 13 and 12 record. He had a terrific second half of that season. Hot shot backhanded by Seeger. He can hit and he can catch it too. Two down. Seven straight retired now by Hernandez and he's been on a roll of late. There are his numbers over his last six starts an ERA of one five a whip of one one and opponents batting average two twenty two and this doesn't bode well for the Blue Jays. He's not given up a home run in his last six starts. He's pitched at New York. He's pitched against the Los Angeles Angels. They've got a, a great offense. He's also pitched at L.A. and versus Kansas City. Those are the teams that he was beating right there. Yeah and he was shaky at the start of this ball game. He contributed to the. Blue Jays only run. He threw a ball away that allowed Reyes to go to second on an infield hit. Another bouncing ball. Seeger throws on the run and Morrison hangs in there and makes a nice play. So King Felix has retired eight in a row. Three up, three down. The Blue Jays go quietly in the top of the fifth.
become a much bigger group. It started by only a couple of guys led by Russell Martin. They had a large group out there today. And speaking of soccer, the battle for bronze at the CONCACAF Gold Cup goes tomorrow on Sportsnet. It is USA versus Panama. You can watch it on Sportsnet World and Sportsnet 360, 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific. Barry, it's really interesting, and we talk about this Blue Jays ball club coming together and really becoming a team, and this is another aspect of that team building. Russell Martin and Deanna Ramara were basically the first guys that started this. Now Donaldson's out there with Pilar and Bautista, everybody getting involved. Bonding like that? Yeah, it's good. How, how about the jerseys? Yeah, they all got with their, their name on soccer it. jerseys with their names <laughs> on <laughs> from their favorite soccer club. This is Kyle Seeger. He was left standing at home plate when Brad Miller got picked off. That was a very big mistake by Miller that ended the inning. They were runners at second and third. Let's see if the Blue Jays can capitalize on that. They they caught a break when that ball bounced out of the ballpark. With the ground rule double. And then Marco had a big strikeout against Jackson in the pickoff. This is the second career start for Estrada against Seattle. He first came in May at Rogers Center. This is his first game here, and Seeger drills it down into the right field corner. He's headed for second. Bautista digs it out, gets it back in. And Seeger leads off with the double. Floyd McClendon is thinking, man, that double would look nice last inning. Yeah, with a couple of runners on base. 22nd double of the season for Seeger. This is a very potent middle of the lineup. They've got some good hitters. They've got stats to back it up. Full extension that time for Seeger to drive that ball to right field for extra bases. Now they have to deal with Cruz and Cano. Nelson Cruz the only Mariner hitter that's doing anything with runners in scoring position is come into this game batting 309 in clutch situations. You see Seeger bouncing off a second and he'll move up a little bit every time Estrada looks to home. The Mariners out here before batting practice working on that lead at second. It's just part of their pregame routine. Watch how he'll gain ground. When Estrada looks away and it's outside. It's not so much to steal third. You just gain five, seven feet at second. That'll pay off big time should there be a base hit. And you get your momentum moving, you get your body moving. You're a lot faster when you're moving like that, and then you can react to the pitch. You can react to a base hit or whatever. If you're flat footed, it's going to slow you down. Well, that's a good change, yeah. One and two to Nelson Cruz. He's single on the first pitch he saw back in the third. He walked with two outs in the first. He reaches for it, grounds at the third. Donaldson, he gets caught in between. There's some good base running by Seeger. He was able to get into Donaldson's vision. And then Donaldson thought, maybe I got a shot at Seeger, but he was too far out of the baseline to put a peg on Seeger. And Cruz is safe. You know, you don't see that very often, Buck, because you're a runner at second base and you're taught what? Any ground ball to your right, you hold. But if third base is going to be vacated like it was right there on that slow roller, you can almost walk to third base and get there. Heads up base running that time by Seeger. He realizes Donaldson's got to come in and make the play. He vacates the bag so he can move up. And then Josh glanced very quickly at the runner. And by that time, it was too late. It'll be an infield hit for Nelson Cruz. He's two for two with a walk. And now here's Robinson Cano. He's popped out twice. 
Nobody out. Cano with just 36 RBIs. He's hitting 221 with runners in scoring position. That's not him. It's such a beautiful swing with power. Gap to gap type of power. There's a line drive. This is trouble. Seeger jogs home. Cruz is hustling toward third. They're going to wave him in. Travis from deep second base. The throw not in time. Rich Donnelly, the third base coach, playing it very aggressively. Runs have been tough to come by for Seattle. So why not push it just a little bit? Told you that Cano was at his best when he is driving the ball in the left center field gap. And in the right center field gap, that time he got a high fastball. And watch him get on top of this one and spray it in the right center field all the way to the wall. Rich Donnelly was watching the relay from Pilar, and he's going to challenge Devin Travis and win that battle as Cruz comes around third base and scores the run. That makes it four to one. For Cano, RBI's number 37 38. The triple knocks Marco Estrada out of the game. Ryan Tapera will come in 4 1 Seattle. His best selling car for 17 years in a row, and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. We are in the great northwest in Seattle, Washington. Marco Estrada has been knocked out of the game here in the fifth. Ryan Sapera will make his 19th appearance for the Blue Jays. Ryan last worked three days ago in that series down in Oakland. He was. Uh, Charged with a run on two hits in one inning of work against the A's. He is in charge right now. That runner at third base has got to keep that runner at third. Don't let him score. Seth Smith, he got the swinging bunt ahead of the two run home run by Mark Trumbull back in the fourth. He cued the ball right off the end of the bat up the third baseline and stayed fair. Donaldson didn't have a play. Two runs in here in the fifth. Still nobody out. Tough spot for Ryan to pair. Coming in trying to save this run down at third. Get the ground ball right here. He can split that ball. He's got a splitter that tumbles nicely and he'll get a share of ground ball out. Skip one right here and that runner. He's not going to go anywhere. With nobody out, you can see Cano's only off the bank a couple of feet. Ground ball, and Travis will look back to Cano. 
And you can bet the third base coach Rich Donnelly is already told Cano. Don't get picked on. <laughs> well that's why we showed it right there. He was only a couple of feet off the bag. He wasn't going anywhere. He's going to make the ball go through number one. You want to shorten up your lead. You're afraid of a line drive right at the third baseman where you get doubled off or a ground ball to the third baseman where he can backhand it and tag you out. Tag you out. Mark Trumbo has walked and homered. Now the infield is in. Trumbo late on that fastball. We mentioned the Mariners not very good with runners in scoring position. In fact, they're the worst in the American League, batting 210 in these situations. Blue Jays are the best, 293. Boy, what a turnaround for the Blue Jays from last year to this. In that category, 293 with runners in scoring position. That goes a long way to help you lead the major leagues and run scored. Foul back. To give you an idea, the major league average with runners in scoring position is 254. Blue Jays, 40 points. 40 points higher than the major league average. Logan Morrison loosening up on deck. The pair ahead 0 and 2. Oh, that's a big strikeout to pair. Took that slider and threw it off the plate away. Trumbo strikes out. To pair up, retire the first two with Cano at third. Mariners have only had two at bats against Ryan Tapera in their career, so they don't know a lot about him. You can see that swing illustrates that Trumbo doesn't know much about Tapera, what he's going to do. That time it was a good sharp breaking ball to get the strikeout. Good pitch in on the hands of Logan Morrison. Morrison singled with two strikes in the second inning. And he ground out to first. Mariners have scored two in the four two here in the fifth to take a four one lead. Before coming into this game Ryan Tapera had inherited four base runners coming out of the bullpen and three of them had scored. And he is trying to improve his numbers in that department. He's got Cano at third now with two outs. Marco Estrada knocked out of this ball game. Save that run for Marco. That's his run at third base. The Blue Jays will have to make a roster move tomorrow as Aaron Sanchez will be added to the 25 man roster. Three and one now. Another lefty bat is on deck at Brad Miller. Don't really have to give in to Morrison here in this situation. Doesn't seem like he wants to pitch to him. With first base open. High pop up headed toward the seats down the right side. Bautista, Travis, and Smoke all converging on it, but it's well back out of play. But now I certainly wouldn't give him too much to hit in this situation with a full count two outs. Trying to save this run. Remember, Felix Hernandez is really in a groove. He's retired the last eight Blue Jays in order. They have two hits. Reyes has them both. And one went about 35 feet. To pair asked Navarro to come out and talk about this next pitch. Well, he's got something on his mind what he wants to do here. And it might have to do what you were just talking about. Don't have to give in right here. You got first base open. 
Well, we have talked about the Mariners' struggles in run producing situations, and you could bet Morrison wants to pick up this guy at third. He'd be anxious to swing. Morrison has 33 RBIs this season. That's off the glove of Navarro, and Cano is going to come in to score. Well, they didn't throw him a strike, but it gets away from the catcher, and now John Gibbons is coming out from the Blue Jays dugout. And I think he wants to know if that ball hit him. Exactly. If it hits Morrison, then it's a dead ball. And Gibbons is asking Greg Gibson, the home plate umpire. But Gibbons heads back to the dugout and take another look at it. Fastball inside. It doesn't hit him at all. It goes off the glove of Navarro and then off the shin guard of the home plate umpire. So the worst thing that could happen right there was a wild pitch. Yeah. Ball four on a wild pitch. Cano comes in to score. It's a three. Run inning, and now it's 5 1 Seattle. Blue Jays digging a deeper and deeper hole for themselves against Felix Hernandez. This is popped up. Reyes, the shortstop, backs up into the outfield, waits for it, makes the catch. The inning is over, but the Mariners score three runs. They knock out the starter, Marco Estrada, and they've taken a 5 1 lead. you can get for many of you. November 15th to the 20th at his Blue Jays Fantasy Camp in Dunedin, Florida. You can join Roberto Alomar, George Bell, Jesse Barfield, and many more for the ultimate major league experience. Your package includes airfare, hotel, meals, uniform, and four days of baseball. Sponsored limited. Go to BlueJays.com slash Fantasy Camp for more. Guys, I, I have a brand new glove. I have a blessing from my wife, so now we can just talk some of the big wigs into it, and I'm there in a heartbeat. I think it'd be a great experience for you Barry and it's a great opportunity for a lot of fans to come down to Florida and put yourself a Blue Jays uniform get on the field with some great Blue Jays alumni and it all takes place in November. The Blue Jays have a tough assignment. They are down to Felix Hernandez by four runs as Reyes leads off the sixth. There's that check swing again Buck you see Reyes. That's how he got hurt earlier this year on a check swing just like that. That took place in Baltimore in April. See him stretching out that side after that check swing. He hits this one into center. Austin Jackson is there to make the catch. We'll keep an eye on Reyes. 
He's retired for the first time tonight. Flies out to center. Felix Hernandez, two hits, Reyes has them both. One was an infield hit, the other a line drive to center field. The run is unearned, and Hernandez made an error. Reyes just stole the run, if you will. A couple of good base running plays by Reyes. Did that one all on his own. Uh, 22 pitches in that first inning. That was pitch 67, so he's been very efficient since that first inning also. Well, that's not unusual for the great pitchers. If you don't get them when they're struggling early in the game, chances are they're going to settle down as Felix Hernandez has done. He's retired nine straight Blue Jays. Last man to reach was Reyes in the third. That's pretty nasty right there. I, I was looking at some of his accomplishments. Felix Hernandez and. You know about all the great years that he has had. It's been an all star. Been an all star 2009 11 12 13 14. As Donaldson goes down. You know the one uh, year that's missing. 2010. That was the year he won the Cy Young. How can the guy who won the Cy Young award not make the all star team. Now uh, he struggled a bit in the first half of that season. He had seven wins but his ERA wasn't. As impressive, and there's that change up grip, and he throws it hard, and it has split finger movement. And you can see Donaldson was fooled badly by it. Five strikeouts for Hernandez. And he drops the curveball over seven wins and an ERA under three, and he wasn't able to make the all star team, but ended up winning the Cy Young that year. We mentioned Bautista hit his 50th home run of the 2010 season against Felix Hernandez. In the first inning at Rogers Center. Blue Jays won that game one to nothing. But they've had. Hernandez's number here in this ballpark. This is his fifth career start coming into this game in his previous four starts he had a 799. Third run at Didn't we do a game here a couple of years ago where the Blue Jays were up seven to one and it was against Hernandez and he got a no decision? Yeah. They, they came back and the Blue Jays bullpen gave up that lead. Just couldn't pin the loss on Felix Hernandez that night. Bautista has walked and grounded out. He had a terrific at bat in the first inning. He fouled off several pitches inside and then worked Hernandez for the walk. They just don't chase. I mean, he got ahead 0 and 2. And then he tried to get Jose to chase after that pitch. He just won't do it. Bautista has 69 walks now. On base percentage at the start of this game, 376. More walks than strikeouts. There's a deep drive to the left. Bautista's gotten one back. Home run number 21 for number 19. A two out homer here in the sixth. Well, he got back into the count after falling behind by. Being very patient as Hernandez tried to get him to swing at that pitch, just wouldn't do it. Got to three and two with a five to one lead. You got to challenge him. He does, and Bautista makes him pay. First home run Hernandez has allowed in seven games. That gets the Blue Jay fans on their feet. It was up. Remember that first at bat, everything was down and away. And now he falls behind in Carnacion. For Bautista, he's got 66 rubies now. He's first. Amazing. Career versus the AL West 35 home runs, 107 RBIs, and 200 games. 
These two, Bautista and Carnacion, are so patient. And they know the strike zone. Bautista's home run, his 224th home run as a Blue Jay, that moves him into sole possession of second on that home run list. Carlos Delgado leads the pack 336 home runs over 12 seasons as a Blue Jay. Base hit for Encarnacion. He stayed on that pitch and drives it into left. The two out rally. Coming right down through the middle of that lineup, the power source for the Blue Jays. Fell behind Ebwin, so he can let it go right there. Let's this one work. Gets his first base hit. And now a home run by Justin Smoke, and the Blue Jays are back in this game. Hernandez had retired 10 straight when Bautista delivered the two out home run. Smoke has flied out twice so far tonight. He's had two good at bats, I think. Hit the ball hard to left field his first time up, and then hammered the ball to center field his second time up. Maybe he can catch one out in front here and homer to right field. Breaking ball, and Hernandez is ahead over the two. Upstairs, one and two now. Teams have been throwing a lot of off speed pitches to smoke lately. A lot of change ups, a lot of curve balls. Got to figure you're going to see one of those right here. There it is. The breaking ball ends the inning. Smoke strikes out. But the Blue Jays get a run back. They trail 5 2 to the Mariners. Jose Bautista, his 21st home run of the season, extends the Blue Jays' streak to seven straight games. They've hit 12 home runs in those seven straight.
Jamie Campbell. Jamie Campbell among all the Blue Jays fans here at Safeco Field. And by the way, I'm sure he's doing this, but check out Sportsnet's MLB Live Tracker. You can get play-by-play -play updates, batter hit zone charts, and real-time win percentages. Get MLB Live Tracker by clicking on any game matchup on sportsnet.ca slash MLB Live Tracker. It's also available through the Sportsnet app, a great way to follow your favorite game. Jamie, all casual tonight, guys. He's on a busman's holiday. Came all the way out to watch the Blue Jays here in Seattle. It's the first time the Blue Jays have played a weekend series here at Safeco Field in a few years. How did they find him in this crowd? <laughs> That's what I want to know. The catcher Mike Zanino. He had a double in the fourth off of Marco Estrada. Ball bounced over the wall in center field and really turned out to be a big bounce for the Blue Jays. Saved a run for him. To Para, a little bit of a bottle, but he is able to recover and retire Zanino. We mentioned a great turnout here at Safe Cold Field. Blue Jay fans really show up. 43,328 in attendance for this Friday night game. And the Mariners, I'm sure, are very thankful for the support Blue Jay fans have given to the Jays. I understand tomorrow's game's already sold out, too. Now, this is one of the real destination ballparks in all of baseball. It's a beautiful ballpark. You can see the football stadium just beyond the stands in left field. The Seahawks, of course. Disappointing loss in the Super Bowl. Not if you're a Patriots fan. <laughs> right? Disappointing for this <laughs> Mariner group. Mm -hmm. Beautiful ballpark, and they have really made some nice adjustments to it. They've opened up that area out in center field so the fans can mill around. Austin Jackson hits it to short. Reyes, strong arm in time. Two down. The 2015 Honda Civic is Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Beautiful view across Puget Sound as the sun is setting here in Seattle. Kyle Seeger doubled and scored in the fifth. He was the beginning of the end for Marco Estrada. Seeger doubled. Cruz had a tapper to third that turned into a base hit when Donaldson got in between of going to first and tagging Seeger, who was running from second to third. All hands were safe. And that led to Robbie Cano's two run triple. And Cano would come in to score on the wild pitch by Tapera. Yeah, that one hurt right there. I mean, you save that run, which they would have. When Miller popped out, it's four to two. He's popped over into foul territory. It's going to reach the seats out. Of the Mariners have always had a decent pitching staff. This year it's a little bit different not pitching as effectively as we have seen them in the past. They rank 10th in the American League. In ERA. The starters ERA is 5th. Bullpen's ERA is ninth. Nick Waits is the pitching coach here in Seattle. Teammate of yours. Yeah. And they've had some injuries to their starters and they just haven't been able to fill them. The roster spots, they just got Iokuma back, been on the disabled list for a little bit. James Paxson has been on the disabled list. Jay Happ will go to the mound tomorrow, the former Blue Jay. If he stays alive, gets a piece of it. You know, you mentioned the Mariners and their injuries, but by Major League standards, they've been racked up a little bit. Blue Jays are the best in the business at keeping their pitchers healthy. 
they have the fewest pitcher player days spent on the disabled list in the major leagues just 152 days for pitchers at the Blue Jays on the DL. Heger strikes out to Perra. Strikes him out. Another good inning for Ryan Tapera. Three up, three down. We'll go to the seventh. Blue Jays got some work to do against Felix Hernandez. Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Beautiful Seattle Washington the Blue Jays are here for a pregame series and they brought a lot of their fans with them. That means lots of jerseys. How about the shot we had earlier tonight when they opened the gates and let the fans come in? It's it's like rushing. They're rushing the, the seats to get down here to watch the bat batting practice by the Blue Jays. They do a real good job for the fans here in Seattle. They have an area beyond the Mariners bullpen and the Blue Jays bullpen out on the left where the fans can come into the ballpark before they let them into the seating bowl. So you can actually see what's going on from that perspective right there. And then when they're ready to let the crowd go to their seats, that's why you see that rush from general admission to get to their seats. And it's a great atmosphere. And we have seen this around baseball. Of course, the Blue Jays have done it at Rogers Center with the West Jet flight deck mm -hmm. out in center, opening it up, let the people mill around. Navarro lifts a high fly ball to left field. Seth Smith is there. This is their team. It, it, they're very passionate about the Blue Jays out here in Western Canada. They love them. Coast to coast, the Blue Jays are a very popular team. The unique aspect of the Blue Jays, of course, is they play for an entire nation. And they get well supported. We see this in all the border states mm -hmm. Cleveland, Detroit, Minnesota. Well, the fans the come to Boston. They come down and they watch batting practice and they get right down on the field and Blue Jay players for the most part are really good. They'll go over and sign autographs and take some pictures. I mean they are working right. They're getting ready for the game but they, they do a good job of. Getting out there for the fans. Danny Valencia behind on one. He hits it to short Miller. As a step into the hole, it's short. Valencia is retired. Two down. Well, when you play on the West Coast, you have the advantage of most of the games are already completed. The Yankees are in Minnesota. They got waxed today. Phil Hughes, the former Yankee, beat them 10 to 1. Tampa Bay beat Baltimore 3 to 1. So they are five and a half back. They maintain pace. Toronto can get to four and a half behind New York if they can come back and win this game. Boston 11 back they snapped their losing streak they had lost seven straight. 
did it in walk off fashion. Uh, Chris Archer won that game for Tampa Bay today. Kevin Pilar. Singles past Seeger gets by Miller as well. Pilar stayed back on that breaking ball. Picks up his first hit. He's grounded out twice to the third baseman. I stand corrected. Colomay won that game today for Tampa as they beat Baltimore. Archer started. He went six innings and on a run on five hits and struck out nine. How about that for a base hit? You go and reach for that pitch. Still able to put it in a in a good spot. You see that reaction right there from Kevin Pilar going, wow. He hit a good pitch. Devin Travis turns on that inside pitch and hooks it foul. Young fan gets a nice souvenir from the ball girl. There are advantages to sitting in the first row. Travis has grounded out twice. Phoenix Hernandez. He makes you take some funny hacks. He's got so many good pitches. I mean, way above average type of pitches. The changeup, his curveball, his fastball, his slider. Curveball uses is up this year. She's throwing it a little bit more than he has in the past. Again, Hernandez just was going to hold that baseball. Not really sure about that pitch, and I don't think that Pilar is going to run. He's been great. He has 15 steals, but I think you hope Travis can get aboard for Reyes. Travis gets a piece of it. Devin's made some terrific adjustments in this his rookie season. Of course, it was derailed for a while when he was on a disabled list with that shoulder injury. But he has picked it up right where he left off coming into this game. He was batting 293. His average now at 290. Zanino has developed quickly into a very good receiver. And when you catch Felix Hernandez, you have to be able to block balls in the dirt. He's going to throw a lot of balls in the dirt on purpose. On purpose. The change up in the dirt, the curveball in the dirt. There's a little flare. That's going to drop. Pilar is around second. He's headed for third. Devin Travis once again batting in that ninth spot turns the lineup over. And the bottom of that lineup setting it up for the top of the lineup. They are so good. The eight and nine hitters, Pilar and Travis. Two outs very quickly. Pilar gets it started with a hit, followed by a hit by Travis. Good piece of hitting right that there that time by Devin as Pilar makes it all the way to third base. Well, with that hit, Travis has slowed things down now because the pitching coach is. Out to the mound. Rick waits out to have a chat with Hernandez, and this kind of conversation with a pitching coach and a pitcher like Hernandez is. So tell me, how you doing? Yeah, <laughs> he's not out there to take him out of the game. <laughs> well, let's just talk a little bit here. Tell me what you're going to do with Reyes. Give him a little bit of a breather. That's why the Blue Jays are never out of any game because they can hit. They can start a rally anywhere in this lineup. As Mark Lowe gets up and he starts to throw, even with two outs, this started with the first two batters going out quietly, quickly here this inning. Reyes goes after the first pitch breaking ball. Jose has two of these six Blue Jay hits tonight. Of course, this is where the Blue Jays are most dangerous, top of the order. Reyes batting with two outs. 
Five two Mariners. Oh, he had a good cut. Yeah. Had a good pitch to hit right there. Bottom of the lineup sets it up for Jose. You can see his numbers quite good against Felix Hernandez. Reyes in these situations with two outs has hit 379 this year. One of the best in the business in that department. This time he strikes out. Hernandez took something off the curveball and basically said that'll be enough. Another strikeout for Hernandez. That's seven. Much to the light of the King's Court. The Blue Jays are going to roll out the welcome mat. Literally, the first 20,000 fans, they go to Rogers Center when the Blue Jays host the Royals at 107. On Sunday, August the 2nd, we'll receive one of those really nifty Blue Jays welcome mats. Go to BlueJays.com for tickets, and we've got a lot of giveaways going on that weekend. The Sunday, longest weekend, long weekend in Toronto. It'll be a great opportunity to come out and see the Blue Jays play and pick up a nice gift as well. All Blue Jay fans here tonight. We mentioned the crowd 43,328. First of three. The last time the Blue Jays were here last August, they drew nearly 100,000 fans midweek for the three game series. New pitching of the game is Steve Delabar. Brian Tapera, two clean innings outside of that wild pitch. It came on ball four to Logan Morrison and led to the fifth. Novar last worked the same day to pair work. That was three days ago against the Oakland A's. He had a one, two, three inning in his only inning work that day. Dave Dalabar pitching against his former team. He was traded to the Blue Jays for Eric Thames on July 31st, 2012. Right here. The changed clubhouses. I remember that day. When we were here right at the deadline Blue Jays needed some extra pitchers in that bullpen they reinforced the bullpen. They also sent Travis Snyder to Pittsburgh. Got yeah, Brad Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Well you can expect that Alex and is trying to do the same type of deal before the July 31st trade deadline. Teams are starting to shuffle the decks there are guys moving around a little bit. But Scott Casimir, he was traded yesterday and he responds very quickly with his new team. He started and went seven innings allowed, no runs on three hits in Kansas City for the Houston Astros as Houston shut out Kansas City for nothing. Steve Ciszek got traded today. The former closer of the Miami Marlins was traded from Miami to St. Louis. The Angels picked up a third baseman after their third baseman David Freese broke a finger. They had Connor Gillespie, a third baseman from the White Sox. Cruz can really hit 
man. He reaches out, pokes this ball into the alley. He's headed for second. Pilar's throw is a good one right on time, but just a little bit late. Cruz thought he was going to be able to jog into second, but Kevin Pilar never makes a throw without the intent of throwing out a base runner. Yeah, Cruz thought he could put it in Cruz control and get the second base easily, but Pilar, he's always playing hard, gets over, cuts that ball off, and he's thinking about keeping Cruz at first base. And Nelson came around first base saying, okay, I, I'm going to make this a ball's far enough away from him. You see him start to slow down and then all of a sudden realize, hey, I better hurry up if I'm going to get that double. Robinson Cano waves at that first pitch. Cano had a big hit in the fifth inning, a two run triple. His first triple of the season. And then he would later in that inning come in to score on the wild pitch thrown by Brian Zapera. Cano now has 38 ribbies for the season. That one almost got away from Navarro, but he makes a play on it. Delabar hasn't had success against Cano. Cano is five for nine against the Blue Jays reliever. The harder you throw it, I think the better. Robbie Cano likes it. Ninety-five, but downstairs. Drew Hutchison was scheduled to start this game. He was scratched in favor of Marco Estrada, who was pushed up the game. Off speed pitch, Travis at second. Well, let's go Cano out. Cruz goes from second to third on the ground ball. There's still some doubt as to whether or not Drew Hutchison will be able to start tomorrow. He's been dealing with an intestinal virus. He actually threw in Oakland on Thursday, flew up to Seattle ahead of the team, trying to get as much rest as possible. But John Gibbons told us during batting practice that Hutchison just wasn't strong enough to make the start, and he's hopeful and optimistic that Hutchison will be able to pitch tomorrow. If, if not, he can't, right? And there's a big problem. Plan B. I'm sure they have thought about that possibility. Seth Smith goes after the first pitch and swings right through it. The infield for the Blue Jays is on the edge of the grass. They have to save this run at third. They're already down by three. And it's getting late. Popped up. Shallow left. Cano is tagging. Valencia is underneath it. And here's the throw, and Cano will stop. He'll stay put at third. Honda Civic is Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Beautiful safe cold field. Five ball to left. Nelson Cruz has to stay put. It wasn't deep enough for him to score. Now Mark Trumbull. Trumbull has walked homeward and struck out. An interesting evening for Trumbull. Those are his numbers as a Mariner. Three home runs, 13 ribbies. For the season, that was his 12th home run. This is popped up. Travis backs up into the outfield. Delabar. Is able to pitch around a leadoff double. Good job by Delabar. Blue Jays down by three.
six hits over those seven innings. He's allowed two runs, just one earned run. Walked the batter and struck out seven, and he had everything working once he got settled in. Yeah, it took him a while in that first inning. Uh, 22 pitches, he threw 10 strikes and 10 balls of those 22 pitches. But then, after that, he started getting locked in. Used the fastball as he powers it in there to get a strikeout. He used the breaking ball. He's got a good curveball, and of course, he's got the great changeup that he can use to strike you out. In the middle of the innings, he retired 10 in a row. He finishes it off by striking out Reyes to end the seventh inning. So his night is done after 100 pitches. He'll turn it over to the bullpen. First one out. Mark Lowe, 31 games this year for Lowe. His ERA is fourth lowest as a reliever in the American League. You can see it right there at 1.13. Wade Davis is number one in the American League at 0.43. Throws hard. 12 strikeouts per nine innings. Donaldson waves at that first pitch. Lowe did not make his season debut with the Mariners until May 6th. Faced two batters in Anaheim. Trout and Pujols and retired the only two batters he faced in that game. Coming in throw strikes fastball slider. Those are his pitches. That he basically throws. He started with this team. I remember seeing him earlier, then he went away, spent some time with other teams, and now he's back with this team. Signed as a minor league free agent last December. One and two to Donaldson. See, they're trying to pitch Donaldson inside. Zanino has moved inside, and they have really put the pressure on the umpire, Greg Gibson. He is trying to get a view of that inside corner, and now he's talking to Zanino, saying, hey, man, i got to have some room in there. Let's see if they come back in. Now they're going away. He's got a lot better view right here of the strike zone. But when they pitch Donaldson inside, Zanino will slide to the inside corner and really block the umpire. Not a view. lot of room that he can look through. The catcher and the batter. Way outside. Full count Bautista homered in his last at bat. He'll be next. Home run number 21 for the Blue Jays slugger. RBI number 66. Donaldson got underneath it and lifts the high fly ball to center field. Austin Jackson is there. One out. Time now for the drive of the game. It's brought to you by the 2015 Honda Civic, Canada's best selling car. 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. We have seen this a few times from Jose Bautista, haven't we? And this at bat, he fell behind. Hernandez, Luis Hernandez tried nibbling. Bautista wouldn't have anything to do with that. Got it to three and two and then unloads for his 21st home run of the season. Puts him in second place in Blue Jay history for home runs. See, third career home run for Bautista against Felix Hernandez. His batting average against Hernandez is over 300. Bautista's second home run on the road trip and a home run in Oakland. Missed this one or did he? Smith back at the wall. He just got underneath it. Bautista is so strong. 
He almost hit that one out, and it sounded like it got in on him a little bit. Missed hit it, and he drove him all the way to the wall in left field. This is a great pitcher's ballpark. Tough to hit the ball out of out of this place. But Jose came very close that time off of Mark Lowe. Off the end, maybe just a little bit. It just didn't sound right, and the trajectory just wasn't like we've seen home runs, and he came that close. Bautista has taken the lead in the American League in RBIs. He came into the game tied with his teammate Josh Donaldson at 65. Kendris Morales of Kansas City. Morales was shut out tonight. And Mark Teixeira of the Yankees. And they lost 10 to 1 on an unearned run. So Bautista, the leader in RBIs in the American League at 66. When you're an established player like Bautista, no matter how you start, you're always going to end up with those numbers that you've put up consistently. Yeah, as long as you play, as long as you get the at bats, you're going to be 30 and 100 if you've done it in the past. For Jose, he's had six consecutive seasons of 20 or more home runs. Carlos Delgado, who also leads in the home run total in franchise history, had nine such seasons. Joe Carter had seven seasons of 20 or more home runs. Now Bautista is third on that list. Vernon Wells and George Bell both had five seasons of 20 or more home runs. Encarnacion trying to walk off the effects of that foul ball. Craig Gibson, a home plate umpire, extending him the courtesy. And Ingarnas Young said, OK, I'm ready to go. See, players and umpires can have a decent relationship. <laughs> you wouldn't know that all the time, right? One and two to Edwin Encarnacion. He's gone one for three with an RBI. Edwin. Picked up an RBI on a ground ball to the first baseman. It was a three unassisted play, but Reyes stole that run in the first as he took advantage of Logan Morrison, who turned his back on Reyes, and Reyes broke for home when Morrison stepped on first. Another base hit for Encarnacion, a two hit night for Double E. He comes with two outs in the eighth. Same type of pitch, same type of swing. From Edwin. His last hit was a pitch that was an off speed pitch down and away. Here's the same thing. Watch him go out there and reach for that ball and rip it in the left field. Miller, the shortstop, missed that one by about a foot. Good at bat right there by Edwin to go down and get that one. Former Mariner Justin Smoke 0 for 3. Inside. Smoke and Low were teammates. You mentioned Low had played originally with the Mariners and he went to Texas, spent some time with the Angels in Cleveland. Went to spring training in 2014 with Tampa Bay. They let him go. He ended up with Cleveland and appeared in just seven games last year for the Indians. So he comes back here and he fits like a glove with his former organization. His fastball's hitting 97 tonight. And Smoke well, gets one of those 97 mile an hour fastballs and fouls it into the seats. He's got a good heater. Smoke has had a couple of good home run seasons here as a Mariner. He had a 20 home run season, a 19 home run season, and a 15 home run season. This ball is lined to center, but Jackson is right there. The inning is over. Blue Jays leave a base runner. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth, 5 2 Mariners. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Hazel May and Greg Zahn.
the one tomorrow you can see game two of that series right here on Sportsnet. It'll be CC Samantha for New York up against the left hander Tommy Malone for the Twins. The Yankees have a comfortable lead in the AL East, and the Twins are trying to run down the front running Kansas City Royals. They gained the game on them tonight. They are five and a half games back in the AL Central. Good ball game tomorrow night. We'll be on the air tomorrow afternoon. It'll be a Saturday afternoon game followed by the series finale on Sunday afternoon. Steve Delabar in his second inning of work. He had a good first inning. He gave up a leadoff double but stranded Nelson Cruz at third base. Morrison Miller and Zanino for Seattle in the eighth. Strike to the big first baseman inside. Blue Jays would love to be able to mount a rally in the ninth, come back and at least tie the game, and it changes the whole dynamics of the series that first game, especially if you could come back and rally with King Felix starting. We saw that, like we said, a couple of years ago. Blue Jays came back and really knocked him, hit him hard. They came back and ended up winning that ball game. But I, I'm with you. You can. What it does for you mentally, it, it's almost like when the Blue Jays beat Chris Archer earlier this week. It just gave them a boost mentally that hey, we could beat anybody. Yeah, and that's a big thing psychologically. And they had a similar opportunity against Sonny Gray in Oakland. Had them on the ropes, couldn't deliver the knockout punch, and you know if they can come back and win this game and, and beat a game, you know, a pitcher like Felix Hernandez, it can do wonders for you. Brad Miller 0 for 2 with a walk. He shows bunt and pulls the bat back. Morrison walked second time. He's walked tonight. He's been on base three times. Officially one for two with a base hit. Miller not showing, but takes ball two. Really tough in the American League to bunt down in the order when you had a guy like Zanino. I know he's got a double tonight, but he comes into this game batting 169 with 106 strikeouts. You're looking to give the opponents two outs, you sacrifice, and that's one out, and then the number nine guy strikes out. Yeah, he's hit 160 for a reason, he hit ninth for a reason. They might try and do something here, two and one. Play for one run. Get one more on the board. That add on run. They're always important. There he goes. He's on the move. The hit and run is on. A throw is short of the mark, but Reyes hangs in there. He makes a nice catch of the low throw from Navarro. And Morrison is tagged out by Reyes. Figure they might try and do something there just to get that add on run. They play hit and run. As Morrison takes off, you mentioned he was five for six in stolen bases. Navarro's been throwing a lot better of late. 33% coming into this game, and he is helped out this time by a shortstop, Jose Reyes, who picks that ball and applies the tag. And then Miller strikes out, balls in the dirt. Navarro throws to first to complete the strikeout. And the Blue Jays overall have dramatically improved their numbers. From the catchers throwing out base runners. They are sixth in major leagues this year. They come into this game having thrown out 36% of the runners. The honor have one of the best throws that we have ever seen him throw in in Oakland the other day. I mean, it was a bullet right down to second base. Throughout Billy Burns in a pivotal situation. Two down now. Here is Zanino, the number nine batter. He doubled in the fourth. 
And it looked like he was going to pick up an RBI, but the ball bounced on the warning track and went over the wall in right center for a ground rule double. And they wouldn't score. Second and third and just one out, and they wouldn't score. As you see Carson Smith start to warm up. Benito swings right through that pitch. Carson Smith, the rookie, has eight saves and nine opportunities. Fernando Rodney started the season as their closer, and he has been dispatched from that role. Foul back. Looking ahead to the top of the ninth, Deanna Navarro, Danny Valencia, and Kevin Pilar are the scheduled batters. Now it's two and two. Benino stays alive. Zanino's average currently at 171. He has some pop. His double tonight. His 10th double of the season. He's also contributed with nine home runs. This time he strikes out. That's strikeout number 107 for Zanino on the season. Delabar, after the leadoff walk, gets some help from his catcher, Deanna Navarro. We'll go to the ninth. Navarro will lead things off. Seventeen years in a row, and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Seattle, Washington. A lot of Blue Jay fans here at Safeco Field, and this Blue Jay fan got a little bit overzealous, but he does a nice job of staying in the seats. He went over there and lost his balance, but never really fell onto the field. His buddy. Got the baseball. New pitcher is Carson Smith. Nobody saw that, did they? <laughs> Carson Smith is now the closer for this team. There are his numbers right there one and two with a 182 earn run average. He's got a funky delivery. He can't throw a ball straight. Sinker slider type of pitcher. Only eight walks and 51 strikeouts in his innings this year. And he will try and Set down the Blue Jays to pick up that save. It'll be Navarro, Valencia, and Pilar trying to get back in this ballgame. They're down by three. He is eight for nine and save opportunities this year. Smith is 25 years old. He's a former eighth round pick of the Mariners in 2011. They got into nine games a year ago with Seattle. 
He has been a closer throughout his professional career. This is his fourth pro season. There's a strike one and one. You see it's 93 miles an hour but he keeps it down. It's got a lot of movement on it. Batters are only hitting 163 against him this season. A lot of movement that catches the outside point. Smith is 6'6. Six, six. He's from Dallas, Texas. And boy, you talk about a perfect body for a pitcher. This is what you want long and lean. Just missed the outside corner. This is the fourth appearance for Smith against the Blue Jays. A total of two and a third prior to this out. And Mariner fan, part of a big crowd here tonight, 43,328. Navarro hits it on the end of the bat. Miller, the shortstop, comes to first. One down. Now for a preview of what's coming up on Sportsnet Central. Here's Jamie Thomas and Carly Agro. Thank you very much, Connor. That's all coming up right after this ball game, so make sure you stay tuned. We'll be right back here tomorrow afternoon. Drew Hutchison is scheduled to start against the former Blue Jay, Jay Happ. Danny Valencia goes after the first pitch. Another grounder is short. Yeah. Down. When he is on, that's what you're going to get. You saw a lot of strikeouts. You saw very few walks, but you see a lot of ground ball outs because he's got all that movement. See, it looks like he kind of slings the ball up there. It's going to be hard for the batters to pick the ball up. It's almost like he jumps at the hitter. There's a little hesitation and then the explosion toward the plate. So Kevin Pilar singled his last time up trying to keep the Blue Jays hopes alive here. This is Pilar's first look at Carson Smith. This is where the Blue Jays got it started just a couple of innings ago. Two quick outs and then a single by Pilar, a single by Travis, and they brought the tying run to the plate. Blue Jays have managed two runs on seven hits. That's it. There's a strike. Pitch a dive bomb. Yeah, it looks like a fastball. It looks like it's going to carry into the strike zone. Yeah, it carries right out of the strike zone. Ball game. Pilar strikes out. Smith picks up the ninth save of the season. Big bats of the Mariners came alive. They're starting to score some runs, and that's an interesting situation. They're trying to get back to 500. They yep. got a ways to go yet. Do they become buyers or sellers at the trade deadline in the next week or so? Tonight, you know you're going to be in tough against Felix Hernandez, and that's exactly what happened. Blue Jays were only able to score a single run in two of the nine innings tonight. They'll have to get it going tomorrow afternoon quick turnaround Felix Hernandez wins his 12th of the season that ties the Astros Dallas Keuchel in that department for the lead we'll be back at it tomorrow afternoon thanks for watching here's Sportsman Central